Hey everybody, Jerkfish here with another video. This time bringing you guys a another Star Wars video review. And it's the first one that I've done in quite some time now. Actually the first one that I've done since I had my big cross-country move to the sunny the state of California. And um, so yeah, this is my first attempt at a review here. So if I'm still, you know, trying to work out how I'm going to exactly do my review space here, but um, I thought I would uh, give this a try and see how um, how doing it this way works out. And especially, I pick a very important and a uh, pretty large vehicle to do my test run with, and that is, of course, the new 2013 Star Wars: The Vintage Collection Amazon exclusive. Slave One Boba Fett version. Um, yeah, so in, like I said in my um, unboxing video, in case you didn't uh, watch it, I'm incredibly excited to actually finally own a Boba Fett Slave One since I obviously grew up with the prequel movies and back then um, the Django version was pretty much the only one that you could get. Um, I know that they released a Boba Slave One in the Saga line, I believe uh, it was, but um, I was never able to get my hands on that, unfortunately. But now, finally, I have uh, what may be the definitive version of the Boba Fett Slave 1, since I don't think Hasbro will be returning to uh, Boba Slave 1 anytime in the near future. And um, first off, uh, the image that you guys are looking at right now, that is uh, a... Uh, De a detailed visual analysis of the vintage Kenner The Empire Strikes Back Slave 1. Uh, all credit for this image goes to Jedi Temple Archives. I just wanted to give you guys a look at the vintage piece so it w you would uh, see how it compares to the uh, the new Hasbro version. Alright, so let me move it right here. And here we have the Slave 1 itself. Let me... The... Uh, that clicked in. So let me. Alright. Again, still uh, working out. Um, so, yeah, here is it in all of its beauty. Like I said, um, in, when I, in my unboxing video, I was a little bit worried about um, what how the item would actually be when I opened it up. Um, because uh, uh, mainly, again, on uh, Jedi Temple Archives and other Star Wars collecting websites, a lot of people have been reporting that their Slave Ones, um, either the box, um, it was shipped in the Binge Collection packaging itself, and so the box came all uh, beat up and the toy itself was broken. Thankfully, mine was packaged very nicely, so no trouble there, but... Still, people were reporting missing uh, items in theirs, like they might be missing the Han Solo and Carbonite, or um, other various pieces, but um, I am happy to report that mine did not suffer any of those issues. It, um, it seems to be in pretty perfect condition, I must say myself. Um, in case you didn't know, this is actually not the first time that we've seen this mold of the Slave 1. Previously, this was used as a... Uh, Ironically, a Boba Fett Slave 1 in a Clone Wars pack that came out around the same time as Season 2 of the Clone Wars. But it was painted, um, pretty much it was a Jango Fett Slave 1, which I have as well, but I won't be um, showing you guys. I'll show you guys a comparison of that in just a moment. But um, you, you'll be able to see that. But um, we have not gotten a true uh, Boba Slave 1 on that mold. Uh, since then, and that came out in 2010, so pretty much um, I, I've been waiting since 2010 for us to actually get a, a Boba Fett Slave 1, since it was seen pretty much destined in the stars that how could they not use that amazing Slave 1 mold uh, for a Boba version, and especially too because um, it's just, really this is a simple repaint, but a fabulous repaint it is. So if you can see here, um, the attention to detail in the paint job is quite uh, superb, I must say. Um, since they already, since Hasbro already had a mold to work with, they didn't have to waste any time um, retooling anything, so they could focus their attention on just uh, making the best paint job that they possibly could. And it does show 
There is, um, uh, first off, the plastic that they use to mold this. Instead of, um, with the Django Slave 1, they used pretty much just a whitish gray uh, base plastic that they painted on. For, uh, Jan- for Boba Slave 1, uh, they actually used a uh, slightly green tinted plastic. So that gave them a nice baseline to uh, work with since um, obviously the ship is uh, for the large part green. Um, you can see that um, they have these nice like uh, different like uh, distorted colors and spots like uh, the ship has uh, obviously seen a lot of wear and tear by the time uh, Boba is in ownership of it. Especially over here you see this um, kind of maroon color and there's uh, different spots of pink paint where I would, uh, would assume it would be like uh, rust or something similar so really great job there uh, also on this green part here you can see uh, visible like uh, um, wear and tear and like scuffing marks with uh, metallic gray paint so again it really gives it that look of you know uh, Boba's had this ship for quite a while now and has seen quite a few adventures moving around on the back um, there's a bit more, uh, a, l- a little bit more coloring and uh, paintwork on the back, but not an incredible amount. But, uh, I mean, who's going to be spending all their time looking at the back of the Slave 1? You can see around here, around the engines, that they use some paint. As well as um, throughout here, there's different tones of gray and green. Um, I would assume just uh, different plastics. And you see also there's some orange paint around this piece. Moving around here, give you guys a look at the inside of the ship. Pretty much, um, again, exactly the same as the Django Fett version, um, just with a different uh, colored plastic. So you can see there's a slightly green uh, tinge to everything, and there's already some uh, previously applied decals or stickers in there. I did not actually put those in there. Those came uh, with the ship. So uh, I don't know why they decided to go ahead and put those stickers on, but they still give you a sticker sheet with it. So I'm not sure why they decided to go with that. But um, regardless, because I'm not much of a uh, sticker applier anyway. So close that. I always have a bit of di- there we go, bit of difficulty with that. Going around here, same features as the previously released Django Slave One, if you have it, where this little ramp comes out, and then this drops down to have like a little uh, prisoner storage vessel. Which this is actually this is not the um, storage vessel that comes with this Slave One. The one that comes with it is actually quite a bit uh, boring, I think. It's really dull gray plastic, which I will um, show you guys here in just a minute. But I just took this one from the Django Slave one and put it in there because, you know, I'm kind of biased to Boba. So anyway, there's that feature. Just pop this back in. There we go. Slide that back there. And moving around here... um, Opening up this. There we go. It's supposed to make that noise, so don't worry. And you see the cockpit is um, still the same as the previous release version, where it rotates depending on what angle you're holding the ship. Um, which this has always been kind of a minor complaint of mine that I really don't care for this rotating cockpit. I would have preferred if it just clicked in in flight mode, and like it does if you can click it in when you're in landing mode like so but you cannot do that for flight mode so it's always kind of constantly he's always constantly moving around uh, depending on how you're uh, shifting the ship and um, but you know that's just a minor complaint that's nothing that really detracts away from the quality of the ship as you can see I have the vintage original trilogy collection Boba Fett uh, in the cockpit it really seems like this figure was destined to be in this cockpit um, really, really loving how he looks in the in the cockpit of the Slave One. Right. 
Um, also, some other people have reported that they were having troubles uh, with their uh, wings of the ship uh, not working properly or being very loose when you click it in. Um, I haven't really encountered uh, those kinds of difficulties. It is a bit more troublesome to uh, get the uh, wings to click into uh, their flight mode and their landing mode than it is with the Django Slave one, which I don't really understand, but I'll show you the difference in just a moment. But pretty much, um, you can only get it to go this far just by, you know, tugging on one wing. You can only get it to go that far. It automatically reverts there. But if I... Uh, hold both of these wings at the same time and if I twist it like that you heard the clicking noise then you can get them to lock into flight mode so not that big of a problem really you know you just gotta uh, put a little bit more uh, effort into it and it'll work out just fine so yeah amazing looking vehicle really is and um we're not going to go just yet, um, but I'm going to show you guys the a comparison between the Django Slave one and the Boba Slave one. And here's a uh, comparison between what the Boba Slave one looks like versus the Clone Wars Rise of Boba Fett Slave one, aka the Django version. So as you can see here, here's the um, the Boba version that we've just uh, shown you. And um, here is the Rise of Boba Fett uh, Django version. So as you can see, two vastly different paint jobs. Very, very different paint jobs. But besides the paint, identical in every single way. Um, besides the accessories, of course, which I will show you right now. The different accessories that the Vintage Collection Boba Fett Slave 1 from the Empire Strikes Back comes with is um, this is the prisoner uh, holding cell capsule that I told you about as in this very dull very boring solid gray cast it is actually a multi-piece uh, thing so you can put a figure in there but I don't understand why they had a kind of uh, downgrade from the um, the Django version that came with this nice gunmetal gray and then this uh, blue tinted clear plastic they gave it I was uh, presuming this to be some kind of like force uh, field that he would like uh, then lower when he wanted the prisoner out. So I do not know why they decided to downgrade that, but I guess they had to save some money somehow. Um, going over here, we have the um, the um, Han Solo and Carbonite piece, which I am actually very impressed with. If my camera will focus on it. I apologize. And I'm not sure how well that's focusing in focus, but it is a very nice, very detailed piece. Um, probably the best Han Solo and Carbonite that we've received so far. Just for comparison, there's the uh, vintage Kenner Han and Carbonite, which was cast in a pretty much straight black. Um, and here we have this one. Which I think looks very accurate to uh, what Harrison Ford and Carbonite look like uh, from The Empire Strikes Back, at least at this scale. Uh, some people have complained that the um, head and face of this particular figure, or accessory as I uh, call it, uh, does not actually look that much like Harrison Ford. But really at this scale it is very hard to tell. But let me. So, very cool. Even has the uh, different buttons and stuff on the side. Unfortunately, it would have been nice if. Whoop, before I drop it. If it it would have been nice if they had a little bit of paint on this. Um, this is pretty much all just a solid gray uh, casted piece. And it is hollow on the back, unfortunately. But you won't be looking at the back of, the, of uh, this piece too much, I don't think. But it would have been nice if they did have a little bit of paint detail on these buttons. Because in the movie, um, uh, in Empire Strikes Back and in Return of the Jedi, um, there are like different lights uh, on these buttons. That, uh, Lando, for instance, he, uh, he reads something off of one of these panels that tells him that Han is still alive. And uh, Leia obviously uh, hits the defrost button on one of these panels. So that would have been nice, but still a very detailed, very nice looking piece. Um, 
which actually does fit in uh, in the slave one itself. First off, you can put it in the prisoner cargo bay, um, I like to call it. It has this little ramp that drops down, which technically, when you think about it, um, in the movie when uh, one of the, the best fin guards is putting Han in Slave 1, it does look like he's kind of putting him up a ramp in the ship. So maybe that's the more movie accurate spot to put him, but specifically the advertised place to put Han in Carbonite is up here in this little slot behind the cockpit. Which is a very tight fit. I don't really like to put Han back there because it, it is very tight and it's very difficult to get him out without uh, putting some force on it that uh, makes me a little bit concerned that I'm going to break it. And um, so you know that you can pretty much pick whatever wherever you want to put it. T really, I'm going to have this on display on my original trilogy shelf though because you know. Seems kind of a waste of uh, resources to have Han cooked up or uh, put up in the um, Slave One all the time when he could be on display. Also comes with these two um, fireable missiles, which you go in the front guns. Which uh, I forgot to mention, these do rotate 360 degrees. They're on these kind of ratchet joints, so they stay in place really good. And also on the back side of the vehicle, which See if I can uh, get around to it. And there's the cockpit door hanging out. But it does come with the sonic charges, um, which you know really aren't accurate to the original trilogy. But since it is a reuse of the Django mold, they're still there anyway. That you press these buttons on the side, and pretty much these clamps release, and the bombs drop away. And there we go. Put that back down. Put the cockpit on again. So there you go. There you have it. There's a, um, a comparison between these two uh, big scaled uh, slave ones, which it really is a shame that Hasbro is deciding to downscale uh, all, all their mainstream mass market vehicles. So we may only see these more accurately sized vehicles in exclusive releases. But, um,. Nevertheless, that's kind of a soapbox getting off deep, off, uh, off topic here. Also, something I'd like to point out is that the guns uh, actually do have some paintwork on them. They have these nice uh, gunmetal uh, gray uh, paintwork on the cannons, while as on the Django version, they're just cast in a solid, flat gray plastic. And that is um, pretty much it. You can tell all the different paint differences. Very, uh, very nice. And what I was saying earlier about the differences in what uh, the base plastic color is, you can kind of tell if I can just open this up. But you see the uh, color of this, uh, the uh, cargo bay tray is in a slight uh, green tinge, whereas on the Django version, it's just a regular whitish gray. So you can see. Um, that they had a little bit of help, you know, kind of had a, 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 a an, an easier time painting it, or at least the green sections, because they used this uh, base base green plastic, lime green plastic. But that's just a little minor detail I wanted to point out. Still a an amazing, amazing vehicle, especially I would say a must-have for all you original trilogy fans out there like me, and uh, especially if you're a big uh, Boba Fett fan. $70 is a pretty steep price, but to me, it didn't really, um, I don't know, it didn't really sway me that much away from buying this because I am such a huge Boba Fett fan, and this is, uh, like I said in my previous video, this is like the very definition of childhood wish fulfillment right here, so, um, uh, you, you pretty much, you know, it's up to you whether you're, um, interested in the vehicle enough to spend the $70 to get it. Uh, also, um, Amazon currently um, has the TIE Interceptor exclusive Vinge Collection vehicle that I'm interested in getting in the future, but um, that probably won't be uh, any time in the immediate future because, you know, I've got to save up to get that again. And um, also uh, currently available is the Biggs Darklighter X-Wing from Toys R Us in the Vintage, vintage Packaging. 
and the Republic Gunship uh, Toys R Us exclusive in vintage packaging. So, um, yeah, uh, I gotta say, great vehicle, really loving it, especially the vintage, um, the vintage look and the vintage packaging, which I will go ahead and whoop, spin around to show you guys real quick. Just what the front of the box looks like, at least, in case you didn't watch the uh, unboxing video. I'm not going to spin the whole box around, you know, you can look up pictures of the box if you want to, but um, the vintage packaging just looks fantastic as always, you know, that, that's, I, I bet that's like half the cost of the of the item right there as you pay for the lovely vintage packaging, but you know, in my mind, it was worth it for the slave one. But um, if you're not as big a Boba Fett fan, or if you're not a huge original trilogy fan, then I'd say wait for a uh, a price drop. Um, but yeah, great vehicle, um, really nice paint job, and uh, really loving that Han and Carbonite accessory. Just all around great job. And just one last time to show you guys a comparison between the vintage Kenner version and how far we've come in terms of uh, toy and action figure tooling. And here we go. So thank you guys for watching. As always, this is Joker Fett signing out. Bye.